Let's do some Python on hardware. All right, Blinka. Okay, the Python on hardware newsletter this week, lead story. Um, you can listen to a fantastic interview with Damien George, MicroPython lead. This is on the Embedded FM podcast. Download it, read it, listen to it, do all the things. Um, you can check out that um, on our website, or on the Embedded FM website, on any of the streaming services that you use that have pod catching. Um, I think I'll bundle up this uh, into two pieces because we're going to talk about the uh, sort of Python day. Um, but sort of the biggest news is you, you and the Circuit Python team kind of made a decision a long time ago. So for the super beginner, there's a little U, well, there was a little U micro U. in front of Python stuff. Yeah. And that was, that meant it's like, oh, this is a micro Python thing. Yeah. And we decided not to do that. Correct. And now MicroPython is also not doing that. Yay! Why did we not do that? Why is MicroPython not doing that? And why is this all good? Why is this? Why yeah. is this? Why is this? Why is this better? Yay! <laughs> We're doing the same stuff together. So um, one of the decisions that MicroPython made, and a lot of code, you know, a lot of things about code is making decisions, and you stick with one or you change your mind later. But they decided to go with um, UOS and UJSON and USIS. A lot of putting the U in front of the library names because they were customized to be for MicroPython. And um, there were a couple trade-offs with that. One, it made um, the code much smaller because they could just shove functions that were necessary for MicroPython in any library um, that was convenient. Um, however, the downside is, is that the code for MicroPython was no longer um, a true subset of CPython. So, you know, when you're doing import U UOS and then like OS, UOS.mount or whatever. Yeah, you'd have to remember. You'd have to, you, well, you'd have to have different code depending on whether it was running on CPython or on MicroPython. And while MicroPython was designed to be very fast and light, one of the things that we wanted to do with CircuitPython is to make um, it as close as possible to CPython running on a microcontroller. And so we decided not to have do so we decided not to change any existing built-in functions in the libraries. We may not implement the entire capability of the library, yeah, like but NumPy or something like that is. Yeah, we have um, MicroLab, which is a totally different thing. Like we yeah. don't say it's NumPy because it's 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 very different. NumPy is, of course, massive. But with stuff like um, you know OS versus UOS, we took out anything like there was I think maybe like a real time clock call. So if you learn Python once, you get to use it everywhere essentially. Yeah, like instead of having like the store the SD card mounting code because like C Python doesn't really have SD cards like it doesn't really like that's not a thing that happens with C Python like you have your built in storage um, on your computer you don't usually you're not like mounting a disk drive um whereas with micro python circuit python you do and so those functions lived in uos and made uos like it was much more compact whereas we pulled them out and put them into a new library called storage um and you know we wanted to make it so that any code that you wrote as much as possible we wanted to make it run on c python or circuit python it's just it's like a it was just a structural decision that we so made. also like we have Blinka and you do stuff in Linux land. Yeah. So that still all works. Yeah. And that's another thing. Like yeah. almost all the examples for all of our libraries can run on a microcontroller or on a single board computer, which yeah. is another powerful thing. So now Python on microcontrollers, desktop Python, whatever you yeah. want to call it. C Python. C Python. And then pretty much the ways people are familiar with Python, they're learning online and classes or if they're reading books, all this stuff should kind of work all the same now. Ideally, yeah, it's like you should be able to actually follow along with a Python class on um, a Circuit Playground Express or something. Yeah. Um, there's nothing new, you know, like you should, it should be as transparent and similar as possible. But the trade off is, again, it's a little bit more bulky. But I'm, I bet, like, in my opinion, these chips only get bigger and faster. I remember, what was it, like six years ago or something, we talked about this. And I think we made a bet that chips are going to get faster, lower costs, and more storage. Yeah. Because we show up as a USB drive, essentially. And we're like, well, pretty soon it's just going to be like a, a full on computer. So why don't we just assume, why don't we work back from this is going to be Python, Python. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of big news. Um, I think one of the cool things too is since schools are doing curriculum in Python, they can have a microcontroller. One of the bits of feedback they usually hear is because they're like, well, I just don't want to type in a screen all day. 
you could do physical computing with something like a Circuit Playground Express, and you can blink LEDs and you're learning Python, and you get a REPL and you get all these things, yeah. and you don't have to remember different types of Python for microcontrollers. You yeah. just, if you know Python, you know Python. So anyways, that's kind of big news. Um, yeah, so a lot of the MicroPython is, is doing the same thing. I think that's, I think that's really, yeah. uh, it's mature. It's all good. Um, and uh, Damien's great, listen to the podcast. Um, and then also just a little note. So someone had um, emailed Adafruit and said, oh, I want to, I'm not going to buy electronics, but I want to donate money to you because I like you, that you do open source. I said, you know what? MicroPython, um, we're, we help with the fundraising each year. To get people to sponsor the MicroPython project on GitHub, yeah, and they're get they're you know they're working towards their goal. We do a separate uh, sponsorship in addition to the thing that's on GitHub because um, we're tight with them. We actually send them money. So I said just donate to them because that's one of the things that CircuitPython is based on. A lot of people use MicroPython. All these things work together. Um, it's open source. Just like there's multiple flavors of Linux, you may not want to use one flavor for one thing, or you might want to use both, or you might want to use either. Yeah, some people it's like It's great. Some yeah. people like Debian. Some it's people... fantastic. You can choose, cool. and all of these things work together. Same kernel. Same kernel. Different distro. Yeah. So um, I suggested that, and they did it. So that was cool. Um, so the festivities, by the way. Begin. Begins next week. Um, CircuitPython Day is August 18th. It starts at 10 in the morning, Circuit Python Day introduction with John Park, special edition 3D Hangouts with Noah Pedro and Liz. Uh, 11 a.m., Beeps and Boops, Circuit Python Day panel discussion hosted by Paul. 12.30, there's Circuit Python Day Game Jam with Foamy Guy. There's the Matrix Portal uh, board build with maker Melissa. There's Circuit Python Day chat with Jeff, Dan, and Katney. There's special edition JP's workshop. There's Deep Dive with Scott. We're doing a show and tell, and there's Ask an Engineer. That's a full day. We're going to be in the Discord server. We're going to be broadcasting in all the places. It'll be super fun. It's super laid back. I know people still aren't, you know, traveling quite yet and stuff, um, or they're just starting to, or whatever. The timing never works out for people to hop on planes. Maybe we'll do a physical one. People do these around the world, but this is one place, and you can watch all the live streams later. And that is our news of the week. Again, next week, Circuit Python Day. You can get the newsletter delivered every single week. Go to adafruitdaily.com. Subscribe. We don't do anything with your email address. It's a completely separate site. Okay.